So this is a head first model, 1983 JCM800. 4010, it's the 2204 circuit, right? The uh, the old JCM800 we know and love, but in combo version. So, as you can see, it kind of looks a bit upside down um, as a normal chassis, but this goes in the, in the, you know, uh, the 4010 combo. If you saw part one of uh, this mod series for this amp, I just kind of ran through the stock amp, talked a bit about the mods that Scott, who owns this amp, uh, had been talking with me about. So he, he wanted to sort of take this thing in a pretty kind of versatile direction, right? So like the core tone of the amp, but certainly want a lot more variation. And um, after a number of hours on the bench, uh, I think we've taken it there. This pretty versatile amp now, it's got a lot of different tonal variations. So in this clip, what I'll do is I'll go through uh, the changes we've made to the amp tonally, so you know kind of what the options are and kind of how it all works and fits together. And the second part of the video, uh, like I have with my other mod videos, will be a walkthrough of uh, the modded schematics. So I'm going to talk about the changes that have been made and kind of how your guitar signal makes its way through your guitar amp in reference to the schematic. And then to finish off a bunch of pictures that I've taken uh, off the guts, the inside of the amp showing the actual mods, the changes, and talking through how I implemented them. Um, and hopefully that's a, uf a useful reference for you uh, if you're interested in amps or contemplating maybe making some of these changes yourself. All of the mods that have been made to the amp uh, have been done using uh, PCBs that, uh, that I design. And these PCBs are available um, for purchase on our website, right? So these are a range of um, kind of smaller, little auxiliary boards that um, they're, not, they're not a main board that you use to build an amp with, which you know I do have. These are more kind of little relay boards and, and other things that um, allow you to kind of hot rod or mod an existing amp. So I've used um, a couple of those in here, which we'll go through. So just to set out kind of how the amp's now configured up, you can see there's a range of switches and new knobs and so on on the front here. Um, Scott, as I said, who owns the stamp, was keen to make sure that the kind of the new features and functionality was available on the front panel. So um, it's a bit nerve-wracking drilling through a 1983 Marshall <laughs> chassis, right? Not something I do every day, that's for sure. Um, but I think in terms of the end result, notwithstanding the damage to a vintage amp, um, it's come out pretty cool, right? Because all, this, all the functionality is kind of out the front here like you would expect on a modern amp. So we have three mini switches here. Um, I'll start with the rightmost one and work our way back. So first and foremost here is a foot switchable uh, FET boost. So it's obviously selectable with the front panel, but it's also foot switchable. So it's relay controlled inside the amp. This is our front end high voltage FET boost. I've featured it on a range of other videos. Um, it's a high voltage gain stage using a MOSFET transistor. So that's kind of foot switchable at the front of the amp and adds a ton of gain um, to the dirty channel. This is now a two channel amp, which takes us to the second mini switch here. So this is channel selector. So you have your you know, normal JCM800 dirty channel here. Um, and also foot switchable is to flick to the clean channel on this amp, which now has a clean channel. So the clean channel on the amp is really an implementation of the low input jack. So if you ever play or own a JCM800, you'll know it has a high and low input. The low input's quite clean. Right? It bypasses the first gain stage um, of the amp. So I've made that now foot switchable using uh, one of our relay boards. Um, so two button foot switch now comes with this, with this little amp. So you've got foot switch for channel and a foot switch for the front end high voltage FET boost and the FET boost only works on the gain channel, right? So the clean channel, um, it bypasses the FET boost completely. And then last but not least on the front here, we have a Jose Dio clipping selector. So the good old Jose modded Marshall implementation here. It's a three-way uh, mini switch where we've got middle position is uh, no clipping at all. So we've kind of just got the standard hot rodded JCM800 circuit there. And then two different options for, for clipping. Um, one is a symmetric 
uh, 20 volt Zima clipping and the other way is asymmetric clipping which basically means I've just used two different values in of Zena diodes to give a non-uniform uh, clipping wave and that kind of just yeah a bit of a tonal variation there you'll hear it when we go through it um, also on the front here this is a clean volume okay which is now on the low input and uh, the clean channel goes through the tone stack here just like the duty channel does so you know it's a simple clean it's just got the single volume but the um, treble middle bass and obviously presence controls uh, apply for the clean channel as well this amp had a couple of mods um, already had been made to it in its life by the time that I got it um, and I've reused well I've kept one and I've reused another so the first one is this little switch on the front here in between the uh, what was the low input jack and the high this is a bright cap switch which in this circuit now um, is actually really useful and a great thing to keep so often you'll see in kind of Jose modern Jose style modern Marshall so anything from you know, you know the Cameron CCV kind of thing some of the Fortin stuff even our own Kelly amp of course um, has bright switches or selectable bright caps um, on the gain stages and uh, the fact that this old 800 already had that I kept it because it's a useful addition right you take some of the high-end depression out of the amp um, it's quite useful the amp also had right at the back here at the back of the chassis well on, on top of the chassis but at the rear was a selectable kind of gain stage bypass switch and I, I detailed this in the part one video if you want to have a look at that um, I've reused that as a cathode bypass, second gain stage cathode bypass. So again, you'll you'll hear it. Think of that like a um, like a structure switch on the Friedman, where you can kind of select the overall gaininess of the amp. It's um it's basically that kind of thing. We've also put a variable depth pot on the rear of the amp and installed um, one of our high voltage uh, effects loop. It's a metro style effects loop board and obviously a foot switch jack um, as well so yeah it's been um been a busy uh, week on the bench with with this one so let's go through some uh some main tones and um we'll kind of go through and give you a sense of kind of versatility that this this uh this thing's got now um i'll start with taking it we'll start with the duty channel and i'll go to the clean um eventually right but i'm sure everyone wants to kind of hear the game the gain tones to begin with. I've taken it out of, out of clipping mode here and I'll just bring the master back a little bit. This is our kind of core uh, tone. I've got the gain at about 1 p.m. here, right? It's um, a nice rock tone there. So I've got the bright cap in. So if I take that out, you kind of get the sense that you hear that. You hear that? It takes the um, takes some of the uh, top end away. So here's here here it is with no bright cap. A bit more of a polished sound, maybe a bit more Friedman-y like, you know, kind of got that top end and the amp's very much tamed out. You bring the bright cap in and you get all that martial aggression that comes back in. So what we've got there is really the hot hot rod at 800. You know, it's kind of a pretty much a greatest hits of uh, you know JCM 800 mods that have been made over the over the journey um, by modders everywhere. You know, very much in the style of the J.T. Lee uh, mod, modded amp that Friedman does. Um, right, and here's the, this is the um, structure, let's call it a structure switch because it's kind of, it's a uh, popular name. Takes out a uh, cathode bypass cap on the second gain stage, so it reduces the overall gain of the amp. <laughs> as well bit more uh, bit more vintage 
bit more classic rock there. So bring the bright cap back in, bring the cathode bypass back in, and we're making the most out of the 2204 JCM 800 circuit here. From a game perspective anyway. tried to boost so with this setting um, which is you know as I said the kind of the you know, rocked up JCM 800 I can bring the uh, the high voltage FET boost in on top of this now so let's do that I'll start with the FET boost off and I'll bring it in you'll hear it come in <laughs> stage in front of the 800. Um, as I've said before on this channel, you can't beat a high voltage uh, clean boost. It's just far more dynamic and got more punch than any uh, low voltage 9 volt or even 18 volt clean boost that you could have out the front of your amp. I think it's a great addition to, to, to most amps. Um, before we get into the Jose modes, I might just flick across to the clean channel so you kind of get a sense of you know where that's at. So here we are again with our straight up um, hot rod of 800 with no FET boost. And I might go to the neck pickup. This is a Charvel Pro Mod Superstock. It's got a JB in the bridge at a 59 in the neck. So the neck pickup even as a humbucker is, is quite low output actually. Um, so over to the clean channel. glassy it's got a little bit of bite on the top end but I don't mind that it's a it's a Marshall it's a Marshall after all it's not going to be super 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 clean um, but pretty effective all right well I'm back on the game channel here's our stock sound <laughs> and I'm going to bring in the first clipping mode right so this is the 20 volt uh, Xena clipping and it'll bring the overall volume down of the amp, so I'll just bring the master up accordingly. So yeah, it really compresses under the fingers there, it becomes um, a bit easier to play, lots of fun, really got that kind of, um, what I call a bit more of a toothy, aggressive kind of sound to it, you know, it's, um, that's the Jose thing, right? <laughs> And we can bring the FET boost in on top of that, of course, so let's do that. Okay, so let's 
let's go across to the second clipping mode. This is where we've got asymmetric clipping going on, which basically means that uh, we're mismatching the zenith. So normally in a, uh, the zenith diode clipping, you have two diodes, um, this kind of the same value to enact the waveform clipping that occurs to give you that um, give you that compression and distortion. So here I've done it um, with two different values. So we're going to get this asymmetric clipping. It's a subtle difference, but to me it just gives it a little bit more uh, a little bit more aggression in the tone. It, it's um yeah, it's a nice variation actually. So you can do it. So why not? <laughs> than the first setting so I'll just bring the master up just a little bit there. Thanks for watching. We're now going to get into a review of the core schematic, the changes uh, that are made to the amp in reference to the, to the modern schematic, and lastly, a walkthrough of the pictures of the internals of the amp where I show how I actually implemented these changes. Um, I hope you find it informative and useful, get something out of it, um, and uh, I'll catch you next time. See you guys. Okay, we'll have a quick look at the stock JCM800-2204 circuit and then we'll get straight into looking at um, the core mods. So I talk, talked about the core tone, the, not the greatest hits of JCM800 mods if you like. The Jakey Lee style, it's all the kind of the same thing, right? So we'll have a quick look at that and then I'll go into looking at how I implemented the switching characteristics. So we've got um, obviously channel switching in the amp now. Um, I've got the Jose clipping option uh, disables when you go to the clean channel, so you can have like you know, 20 volt Zener clipping active on the mini, mini switch on the front of the amp for the gain channel. When you flip to the clean channel, that gets disabled. I've also got the FET boost on a relay as well. So all that's implemented with relays. We'll, sh we'll have a quick look at that from a schematic um, perspective. So this is the stop. JCM800. This is probably the clearest schematic on the internet. Now, I don't know who drew this, but who did it did a cracking job. It's really clear. Some of the old Marshall schematics are pretty hard to read as they've been kind of reproduced over the years or photocopied or whatever it is. This is nice and clear. Your guitar input come in, comes in here, right? Here's the high input jack, here's the low input jack. Quite simply, when you plug into the high input, your guitar signal will make its way through this little, this is a um, grid resistor here, there's a one meg to ground, it keeps a ground reference and into the first um, gain stage or triode, so this is the you know one half of V1 tube, here's the other half over here, right, and this will amplify your signal, it will come through here and make its way to the other side of this coupling capacitor and it makes its way up to the low input jack and when there's nothing plugged into the low input your guitar signal will actually nicely come through here through this little network um, through your gain pot right this is the preamp gain and into the second gain stage where it's now driving that second gain stage having been amplified by this first gain stage here 
When you plug into the low input on a JCM800, what actually happens is you break that connection there and your guitar signal is just going to come straight down here into the first, what is now the first gain stage, right? And this first gain stage here gets completely taken out of the circuit and bypassed. Um, which is, you know, simply why when you go into that low input, it's just so much cleaner. So whether you've come into the high or the low, your guitar signal will make it this far and it'll then come up here, make its way through that coupling capacitor there, through this voltage divider, into the third gain stage, which is driving this cathode follower, and we're into the classic uh, age-old Marshall tone stack setup, driven by the cathode follower. Uh, here's our treble pot, our bass pot, our middle pot. Into the master volume pot here, Okay, out of the master volume into the phase inverter valve, this is V3, which splits the signal into two to drive this tube and this tube, which are your two power tubes, which in turn drive the output transformer, which is this guy here, um, which is in turn then driving your speaker output, right? It's a whistle stop kind of tour through uh, a valve amp, but hopefully that kind of helps to orientate um, you know what's happening in this amp because as we add layers on with respect to the mods and the switching and so on hopefully that base you know is is useful right here are the mods to the core circuit so when i was kind of you know demonstrating the core tone you know the hot rod 800 straight up um this is what we've done you could actually implement this in an 800 without doing all the switching stuff that i've done right? and i mentioned this in part one of the clip um, maybe in my 1987X mod video as well. This is, these are the, effectively the mods that I made to my own JMP2203, which you know is a video I posted uh, a number of months ago now. And you know, I've left it like this because it just sounds killer. Um, so the changes here, we've just made a number of component changes. Um, notably, I guess, is that this first coupling capacitor is 22 nanofarad in the stock circuit. We've reduced this to 2N2. What we're doing here is we're reducing base in the signal as it moves through the preamp. What happens in a JCM800 and some of the older Marshalls is um, under gain, and you've got a lot of gain coming through, the base gets too heavy through the preamp and the amp becomes woolly. So if anyone follows the channel, you, you've heard me talk about this before. We take base out of the signal here, keep it quite lean, and then the depth circuit, which is this guy over here, brings the base back, but the base, the bottom end is coming into the power amp here rather than through the preamp, so it keeps the amp tighter. Um, uh, so yeah, your guitar signals follows the same path, so it's from the high input here, through through the 2N2 cap, through here. Um, it's a 220K resistor to ground off the preamp pot now, so it just reduces the gain a little bit because some of the mods in here result in the amp been able to produce pretty high gain and it gets um yeah it just gets a bit out of control given that you know with with the switching mods here we've implemented a fet boost we've got jose clipping there's more gain and you can poke a stick at so this kind of helps just keep it under control a little bit in the stock jcm 800 this cathode resistor here on the second gain stage is a 10k um 10k resistor cold clipper they call it all right so we replace that with a 2k7 and we also implement 0.68 microfarad uh, bypass cap. So it's the same configuration as the first gain stage. So gain stage two replicates gain stage one. This is what Jose did, right? When he modded Marshalls and he put an extra gain stage in front of a plexi, he replicated the 2K7 and the 0.68 um, microfarad bypass cap. So it's just one after the other. Out of there, this is all unchanged, right? Um, here I've got a 47 microfarad capacitor on this cathode resistor. This is often called the fat cap. Um, it's kind of a, a term that was used to describe uh, the capacitor that was added to Eddie's number one plexi amp. Right, so this just definitely kind of fattens up the tone and drive, helps to drive that gain stage. Um, this is your cathode follower, as I mentioned, that's driving the tone stack, and we've added a 470 picofarad 
to ground here. What this is doing is bleeding some high end, top end uh, frequencies out of the amp at this point and shunting them off to ground. Um, there's a couple of ways you can, other ways you can do this. You'll see amps where um, 470 picofarad or, or less um, is typically added to a plate resistor up here or an anode resistor. Um, kind of a different way to do it here, a slightly different result. It's a different part of the amp. But um, what we're doing here is we're just adding that right at, right at the end. Um, this is optional, right? If you really want a lot of brightness in your amp, you can leave this out. Um, and you can compensate just with your, you know, maybe with your presence and your, and your treble. Um, but it is, yeah, it helps to kind of keep the amp a bit, a, a bit, a bit more under control. This is all unchanged, right, in the stock uh, Hot Rodder 800 circuit, notwithstanding this um, relay switching, which I'll go through next. And then we added the depth circuit. This is a variable depth this time. If anyone's followed the channel before, you'll see that I've done this before with a 220K fixed resistor, like a normal resistor. That's your fixed depth. Um, again, you know, it's not something that um, that I came up with, right? That's a very, really kind of common technique. But what we're doing here is we're using a linear one meg pot um, to control the amount of depth that um, is coming through. And I'll also change this to an eight ohm tap. So in the stock 2204, the negative feedback line, which is what this is, is coming off the impedance selector. It comes off the four ohm tap. Um, so by moving it to the eight, I've increased the negative feedback and um, the amp, with these changes in it, uh, it's a bit bright right, and a bit too unruly. So this kind of just um, tightens it up and just, uh, it's a way of you know tuning the amp overall, right? You can play with this, you can try four, eight or 16 and you'll notice a massive difference as you move between the three. Um, 16 being the most negative feedback, four being the least. The other way to do it um, is to keep this at eight or four and change this resistor here, this 100K resistor is actually controlling how much negative feedback makes its way back into the amp. Um, so either lowering this is another way of increasing the uh, negative feedback in the amp. And then down here, this is our elevated DC heaters. Right? We've seen this before. If you followed the channel, again, it's an age-old trick. Um, it does wonders to, re for, to reducing the noise in an amp like this where you've got traditional AC heaters, right? 6.3 or 6.4 volt AC heaters, which are you know, powering the heater filaments on the, three, on the five tubes, I should say. Normally this is, uh, that center tap is just set to ground. What we're doing here is we're moving the center tap off the ground and we're creating um, a DC volt reference voltage. It's about 65 volts at this point here. What we're doing is I've labeled this screen uh, being screen supply and here's the screen supply node here. Okay, SC for screen. Screen supply, which is you know used to feed the screens of the power tubes. You tap off that and you create a 470K and an 82K voltage divider with a about a 10 microfarad electro cap here, is what I normally use, um, which is just helps to filter it and keep it nice and clean DC. So you've got a 65 volt DC reference here and that becomes the center tap for the heaters. And by uh, DC elevating these AC heaters, um, you'll do two things. You will reduce the hum in your amp and you'll also um, give your tubes, particularly your cathode follower tube, a bit of an easier life. All right, so I took the trouble of drawing up the switching setup. Right, so this is how I implemented the channel switching. Um, look, you know, I wanted to I wanted to put this up here, so you know, as a reference, um, but I also wanted to do it so that I could remember, because um, I was pretty happy with how this kind of all came together. So um, we we'll document this one up and make sure I can implement it again in the future. Um, so what we need to do really is kind of I'll explain this in reference to. Uh, the existing, you know, the stock 2204 schematic that we were just looking at. Um, but, you know, so you just kind of need to uh, draw a parallel between what we're doing, what we're talking about here, and obviously what's in the stock circuit. 
And then, you know, in the last part of the video, of course, I'll show how we actually, you know, um, wired this um, in practice. All right, so the amp only has a high input now. Okay, so you're going to come in here. Here's our 68k grid resistor, one big to ground, and um, two things happen here. One, right? one signal goes off to the FET boost board, and then out of the FET boost board into the first gain stage, and then I tap off another wire, which goes to the first relay on our relay board. This is for the clean channel. All right, so this gives us a path, a signal path, that. Um, can then bypass this first gain stage because what I wanted to do was to have the clean channel to be basically the same as when you plug your guitar into the low input on a JCM 800, right? So we're kind of keeping the, I guess, the essence of the 800, both from a, you know, a high input and a low input perspective. So let's just trace it through, and we'll do the let's do the high input first, and then we'll do the low input, right? Um, this is the relay, and it's a double pole, double throw relay, right? So each of these three points here is a switch, right? And they switch together. So you can imagine the relay clicking back and forward. This line here, this is, you know, this is one of the poles on the switch. And you get a connection this way, and then when it switches, the connection goes from here to here. And likewise, from here to here. And so the way it's drawn, we're on the gain channel. Right, the gain channel is selected. So, guitar input here, um, through the FET boost board, this has its own relay in it, right? I didn't draw it in, so just imagine, right, that this thing can be active or not active. Um, and so this is kind of our first gain stage, if you like, right? Um, but, so the guitar signal comes through here into the first tube, it's V1B in a 800, it's not V1A, it's V1B, but don't worry about that, it just means it's coming into the other side of um, V1. Up here through the coupling cap, alright, and as the relay is configured at the moment in the gain channel, your signal comes through here, right. Here's our 470 picofarad and 470k. Uh, treble peaker. This is just stock 800. Haven't changed anything here. Through the second relay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Into the gain pot. This is the preamp gain. Here's our bright cap. All right, which goes between the input to the pot and the wiper. Here's our 220k resistor to ground, which is just this is one of the part of the mods. We covered that when we looked just when we just looked at the. Um, stop well the you know the hot rod 800 mods i should say so out of the wiper all right back into the other side of this relay and here we go into um uh, the second gain stage v1a all right and then through the rest of the amp i haven't drawn the whole amp out because from there on in we're into uh the schematic that we just looked at okay Right, so I've hit the foot switch and let's pretend the relays have clicked over. Both of them will switch simultaneously. In fact, all three do. I'll show you what K3 is doing in a minute. But uh, for the purposes of the preamp, the both of these will flick over to, imagine that line pointing down, pointing down, pointing down, pointing down. Guitar input comes in here. Remember, it's also coming across this wire here. When this flicks across, um, our signal then is going to come up here and travel straight over here. All right. So um, what we've done already is to bypass this gain stage completely. So signal comes straight through here, up and around. What I'm doing over here on the second pole is just take note of this, right? Jose clip. Clipping switch ground. This is how I disable the uh, diode clipping when we're on the clean channel. Okay. Basically, what's happening here is that the ground, which goes to the switch, the clipping switch, is only available or only connected to ground when the relay's in the game position. Okay. As soon as this relay flicks down here, this thing's not connected to anything. 
so there's no ground available simple as that anyway clean channel here we go through here up here uh, through here remember we're in the clean mode here so this now is down our signal comes straight through and connects straight through back onto the relay again there's 68k to ground here I played with this value and got up to the point where I thought it sounded good um, this is uh, dropping the signal level All right. if you, if you connect this straight through with no gain pot or no no um, uh, no level pot on the clean channel it's going to be too hot and your clean channel is going to be too distorted right, so just dropping a 68k to ground there um, will get the signal low enough that you'll get the clean sound that uh, I demoed um, we only have one pot on this amp for the clean channel and I decided to use it in the master volume position rather than in the preamp position um, I played with both and I liked it better in the, as a master volume um, yeah so that's that that's how we implement the channel switching in the preamp so let's go and have a look at how we do the master volumes and go all right so here we are in the um kind of let's call it the second part of the preamp so just again to orientate yourself here this is the third gain stage this is a cathode follower which is driving our standard Marshall tone stack um, and then out to the phase inverter now uh, what have we got here three things to talk about first of all this is the 10k resistor and the 0.47 microfarad um, this is how we're setting up our Jose clipping circuit right what normally happens here again if you followed my channel you would have seen me talk about this um, certainly in the 1987X mod video normally what happens is you, your cathode follower here you go 100k to ground and your tone stack TS here your tone stack connects directly to this point what I'm doing here is creating a Jose clipping setup um, but it enables you to keep the master volumes still post tone stack to a classic Jose uh, old school Jose, you'll have the master volumes move pre tone stack as well. I mean, it's a thing, right? And it has a sound and it sounds pretty awesome. Um, but it's also problematic with noise and it can be a bit of a pain using effects loops with it. So, this kind of allows, you know, this setup here allows, I, I believe, kind of a best of both worlds where you, you still retain the classic kind of JCM 800 sound if you want it with the post tone stack master and you know line a low noise circuit and something that's kind of set up quite nicely for um, if you're going to use an effects loop um, because the, the master volume here is post effects loop rather than pre effects loop which just makes it a bit uh, yeah much better signal to noise ratio um, but this setup here is still allows a proper uh, diode clipping um, uh, effect to occur so 10k off this cathode right, through this coupling cap and then you connect through the tone stack I'll show you how to implement this in terms of actually wiring it in when we look at the pictures um, and then here's a three-way switch right in the middle position um, it's no diode clipping and then we've got um, 20 volt zeners on one side and here's our asymmetric 24 volt zener and a 5.1 volt zener and then this little mini switch it's just a it's actually a three pole switch right i didn't have the right ex the exact right schematic symbol here so forgive me but it's a three pole switch it's an on off on switch all right so when the switch is in the middle position um these guys aren't connected and rather than hitting this straight to ground which you could right you could wire that straight to ground but if it was wired straight to ground um, when you go to the clean channel and you had a uh, the zener let's say the 20 volt zener is selected they'll still be active and your clean channel will be will be clipping um, so as I showed on the preamp schematic the K1 relay one of the uh, poles on the K1 relay is giving me 
um, a switchable ground. So the ground here is only present when we're on the gain channel mode. When we go to clean channel, that ground lifts and this whole thing has no effect at all. So your signal just passes straight through here. It stays nice and clean. And this is how we implement uh, switching between master volumes. Um, so the clean pot, the clean master, and the gain master volume are connected in parallel. Um, and then you simply run the wiper from each pot to either side of the relay and then out to the phase inverter. So the K3 relay on my relay board, I'm actually using one side of it. Um, and it's as simple as that. Okay guys, now what we're gonna do is step through a bunch of pictures which I've taken of uh, the mods. So we start with the stock amp and I've got a couple of kind of in progress pictures and then um, a set of pictures which kind of set out you know, how we ended up implementing all of the changes that we just went through um, on the schematic. So, um, I guess first and foremost, this is obviously a straight up, pretty much unbolested uh, Marshall 2204. The amp had, made, had had a few changes made to it, which I've said, you know, um, described in part one and the first part of this part two video. Here's the bright cap switch. And here's this kind of funny switch at the rear of the chassis, which is um, taking out one of the gain stages, um, which you could kind of do manually with that switch. The other thing I noticed when I actually got into um, working on the amp is the tone stack had been modded. So this was a 220 picofarad um, cap here, which is for your treble pot. Normally it's you know 470 picofarad or 500. This Slope resistor here is normally 33k, it was um, 56k, being definitely the old one had been clipped out and a new one put in. And a mod here on the mid pot with this extra capacitor here. So definitely had um, had, had a few changes uh, made to it in its life. So let's crack into looking at uh, the additions. Right, first thing I do, um, I've got to get a DC supply up and running for the relays. These amps don't have, you know, a, a tap that you can hook into for a relay supply. So I get these from a local electronics store here in Australia uh, called JCAR. This is a 240 volt to 9 volt AC uh, power transformer. It's tiny. You can see this is one of the power switches here, right? It's because you're going to get a relative size of it here. Um, it's connected to the mains fuse, so it's on the other side of the mains fuse of the amp, even though these are actually have a thermal fuse inside them, so it's pretty safe. Um, these, it's a centre tapped um, supply, so the white wire is a centre tap, I just heat shrink that off and don't use it. And I'm using the 9 volt AC here, which I run across to my FET boost board, which has got a rectifier on it and a voltage regulator and it sets up the 5 volt supply that we use for the relay switching. Now when you're working on these um, ST1 boards or on these old Marshalls, you can actually lift them up and work underneath them. You, you do have to, as I explained this in the um, in my mod video in the 1987X, I do unsolder a few of these cathode and um, anode wires which run down to the, these are the preamp tubes underneath the wall of the amp here, or down below the wall of the amp. Um, but you can actually get enough leverage on these things to get under them quite comfortably. Just make sure you don't pull the wires, right? So just gently um, lift them up out of the standoffs here and you can tilt them and you'll easily see the, the wires that are holding it back. And just unsolder them gently from the pins of the tube and you'll be able to tilt it up. Um, you know, you don't need to remove the whole thing out of the amp. You can, of course, but it's you know, a lot more work. Um, and you're risking the more you you know you mess with these things, the more you risk that um, you'll make us a mistake. Here's a kind of in progress shot of what's going on. This is our FET boost board, right? The, here's the high voltage transistor right here. Everything else on the board is just kind of setting up the circuit around it. This is the relay here to make it foot switchable, and this end of the board here is the uh, circuitry which sets up the DC supply that can power the relay and make this whole thing foot switchable. 
Um, so this is a little power transformer that I showed a few seconds ago connects over to here where it then gets rectified. This is a voltage regulator that sets up the five volt supply. Um, you can see I've drilled into the chassis here with these for these standoffs. Standoffs. This is to mount this PCB. Um, and yeah, so just a bit of a progress shot here to kind of you know, give you an idea that it doesn't all end up. Well, it might end up looking okay, but um, uh, during the during the build process, it gets a bit hairy. Um, here's the FET boost board now in place. Right. So a couple of things to note on um, on this. Um, this is the input jack here, the high input. The grid resistor, this is a 68K grid resistor. Now in the stock amp, that grid resistor is actually soldered onto V1 on the tube. These FET boost boards do not like it when you have a grid resistor between the boost and the first triode that it's powering. So you have, you've got to move the grid resistor to before the FET boost board, otherwise it does um, it'll get noisy and it freaks out, right? So, Move your grid resistor to the input jack, which is, as I said, I've got it here. And then from here, you can come into the input on the FET. And from the output of the FET, you then go to the uh, triode down here. Um, this is the cathode resistor for the uh, second gain stage. It's a 2K7 resistor. And I would normally just put the 0.68 microfarad electro cap um, just solder it in here, right? But I reuse the switch. You can see on the part one of the video, I showed how I could basically implemented a, you know, a structure switch or a gain structure switch. So this actually runs off to that switch that was already on the top of the chassis where I can switch in that um, bypass cap in and out. Uh, another progress board, uh, progress shot, I should say. This is our one of our relay auxiliary boards. This is the three relay board. It it also has a um, uh, space on here to rectify a, a low voltage AC signal to create a supply for your relays. I didn't need to use it, right? Because my FET boost board was already doing that job for me. So I'm running a five volt supply from here over to this board to power these relays. Um, this is a 470k resistor with a 470 picofarad uh, cap. This came from the original amp. Um, you can see I've kept all the links on here. I was just didn't want to trim any of this stuff off until I had confirmed that my design would work okay. And once I, you know, was pretty happy with the operation of it, I went back and I you know, trimmed these links off. So but, um, you don't want to kind of want to have these long leads floating around if you don't have to have so. But the more you have that floating around in your amp the more chances are that you'll get noise um, creeping in. Now this is how I set up the Jose clipping. And I, um, you would have seen in the schematic how we are doing this now. Um, and so you've got, to, you've got to do a little bit of work here. You've got to move, this is the cathode um, pin of the cathode follower on V2. And normally this thing runs up to the PCB here and there's a 100k resistor that's up here. Right, I remove that 100k res resistor and I've moved it down here directly onto the pin. This is my 470 picofarad um, cap which I talked about in the schematic which bleeds off some of that high end on the cathode follower to ground. And then I've run that off and that goes to the ground, to the bus ground, which is... Um, where the pots are, right? There's that bus ground that runs across um, to the exact same point where this here was connecting to. Right, to keep all the grounding consistent. Um, and now what we've got is our 10K, in reference to the schematic, there is also a 10K resistor and that um, 0.47 microfarad coupling cap that's up there. And then that's connecting to the PCB and connects to um, the 33k slope resistor which is feeding the tone stack okay probably got another picture of this where you can see it um, and then from there this little black thing here that's a wire you'll see it in a second that heads off to the Jose clipping switch um, and by doing this we're actually implementing um, the wiring or the connections as dictated by 
the schematic. Here you can see it another angle. Um, all right, so here is our it's shielded coax. It's coming from the same bit of copper all right, on the PCB that this coupling cap connects to. Here's our 33K slope resistor, and that goes off to one of the mini switches on the front of the amp. Our 100K cathode resistor, which is normally there for the cathode follower, that the cathode follower that's come out. Okay, um, that's now down here, as I just said. Um, so here, let's just follow that train of thought. Here's the 100K resistor that used to be there. It's now gone. It's the one that's down on the, you know, soldered directly to the pin of the cathode follower now. Here is the shielded coax that I was just talking about, and it's running off to this mini switch here, which is where I've got the Jose clipping set up. There's the 220K resistor sitting underneath that. This is a ground wire which runs off to a relay, and this is how I'm implementing disabling the Jose clipping when you go to the clean channel. So the ground gets toggled based on a relay, one of these guys, um, and the ground is only there when you're on the gain channel. All right, so you can have clipping selected on this mini switch, and when you go to the clean channel, it has no effect. Um, underneath the heat shrink here are uh, the Zener diodes, which are just wired in series. All right, so uh, here we've got the um, two 20 volt Zeners, and here we've got a 24 and a 5.1 volt Zener. They all connect to the same point here. Okay, and that same point is connected to the signal wire of that coax. It all matches the schematic, all right? So I'm just what I'm doing here is just trying to show you kind of how to um, uh, how to wire all the, the stuff in. Because it's one thing to look at the schematic; it's another thing to actually implement it. Um, I'm showing you this picture because I wanted to show you how I am feeding the clean channel. If you look at the schematic, you, you would have seen that um, off the input jack, I run two signals. One um, is the 68K grid through the 68K grid resistor onto the FET boost. This is for the gain channel. And then I run off the same connection point on the jack, there's some shielded coax that comes out here and goes to a relay. This is for the clean channel. All right, so let's just make sure we've got a, 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 a signal that's completely away from the FET boost and is able to be there for when we switch to the clean channel. Here we're looking at the back of the amp. These are your speaker jacks on the back of the amp. Okay, and you can see this is the you know, first power tube here. I'm showing you this because I want to show you the variable depth. So what I'm doing here is I'm tapping off the, this is the impedance selector. When I first implemented it, which is where this picture was taken, I'm actually tapping off the four ohm tap. And you'll know that in the, in the um, when I talked about this in the um, in the schematic review, I ended up moving it to the eight ohm tap, which is this green one over here. You just move that purple wire across to, over there. But what we're doing here is, is off the impedance selector, Here's our one meg linear pot. Um, this is a 4.7 nanofarad ceramic cap. I'm using a ceramic this time, just a slightly different um, sound. And uh, this is the negative feedback line that is going to the amp. Right? So this purple wire here was originally wired directly to the impedance selector. You've seen me do this before if you followed some of my other mods. Right? Just remove that negative feedback line directly from the impedance um, and then put this variable depth in series in between the normal line and where the impedance selector actually is. Because this impedance selector, of course, is being fed by the output transformer and that's where you get your negative feedback line from. Um, this is the DC elevated heater setup, All right? So I've got a, a, um, a tag strip here, which is bolted to the PCB. There's no copper anywhere near this on the PCB. So it's a safe place to uh, connect to and without any danger that you're actually screwing into a part of the board where over here, for example, where there's actually, you know, high voltage lines. We're away from that. 
It's a 470K resistor. This is a screen supply, um, which is going back to the board. And you'll see where it connects to when I show you a, um, uh, a zoomed out picture. 82, 82K resistor here to ground. That's been grounded. It's that black wire there is going across the ground. And here's our 10 microfarad cap as a smoothing cap. And this brown wire here, which is soldered to the midpoint, it's our 65 volt DC reference, right? So this is the center tap for the heater supply. Um, what am I showing you here? Okay, this is, we're nearly done with the MPF. So we're kind of, I've got the relay switching in for the channels. I've got the FET boost in. This is the foot switch jack. Um, I haven't put the mini switches in here yet. All right, but I've got the I've got the foot switch uh, capability here. This is the 0.68 microfarad uh, bypass cap for the second gain stage. So remember, I there's that switch, that funny old switch on the rear of the chassis. Um, those two red wires there make their way back up onto the board over here. So what I'm doing here is using that switch to um, switch this bypass cap in and out. Of this cathode here okay so that's our little structure a structure switch this red wire here I need to show you this while we're here um, this is tapping off the preamp node um, this is our high voltage supply for the FET boost board right so the FET this thing here operates on the same high voltage supply that is feeding the preamp um, of your Marshall here all right so I'm just tapping off there and giving it the same uh, supply voltage, about 250 volts from memory, I think, somewhere around there. This is pre-drilled for the effects loop board, right? So this is where this will go. And this is the effects loop bypass switch. Um, I tend to do these things. I don't wire everything in and then turn it on and hope for the best. I always test as I go, right? So I'll do a bit and then I'll check the amp. I'll check it on the scope, I'll check voltages with the multimeter, I'll even bring it in to the studio here or into my music room and play it through a cab and see how it's sanding. I've actually got a speaker cabinet out by my bench now as well, so which is pretty handy. But yeah, when you're doing this kind of thing and when you're building any amp, don't just build the whole thing and then hope for the best at the end. As soon as you get to the point where you can, you can test something, test it because you don't want to do a whole lot of work and then have to unwind it. Um, I, what I'm showing you here is the clean channel. Uh, this is the volume for the clean channel. Um, you see in the schematic that this is the master volume for the, for the gain channel as it normally is and we're running um, the clean volume in parallel. So this pink wire here runs um, off in parallel from the um, from the master volume for the gain, and both the wiper for the gain channel and the wiper of the clean channel make their way over to this board here, where um, this third relay, as you can see in the schematic, this is K3, K1, K2, K3. Um, this is selecting which of these master volumes will be selected and to make their way into the phase inverter input and through the rest of the power amp. Um, here's our 220k resistor which is in parallel across the gain pot. Right, you can just whack it straight on top of the pot there. And I guess this close up here shows you the existing mod that was in. So this is the bright cap switch. This is the bright cap. And a bright cap will always sit between the input to the pot and the pot's wiper. So you can see through the switch here, they're effectively you know, giving you the ability to break that link between the wiper and the input to, uh, to the pot. And here we have um, kind of the amp basically done, right? So I've got all my mini switches in here. Here's my relay board, the FET boost board, and here's our effects loop now in place. Um, and this mini switch on the back uh, enables the uh, effects loop to basically completely, you know, true bypass, completely switched out, out of uh, the circuit. This is, this red wire here 
um, is the screen supply voltage is here. So I'm using this to go to the, you know, the uh, DC elevated heater, that little tag strip that I had um, shown there uh, before. This red wire here, this is the, this, uh, the, at this point here in the amp, this is the phase inverter power supply node. I always run my high voltage effects loops off the phase inverter supply. Um, so that red wire here is tapping that off and it comes underneath here and then comes into the B plus um, for the FX loop. Okay, and you can see here for the foot switch jack, I've completed the wiring. So um, previously I had this side wired up and that enabled the foot switch to control the switching um, both for the FET boost and for the relay board. And now on the other side of the jack, I've now wired those to these points here on these mini switches. And so you can see the middle leg of the switch is grounded. And then the one side of the switch um, comes back here. You do it this way, right? So that when nothing's plugged into this jack, that so you don't have a foot switch plugged in, these terminals are connected. Um, which means that these switches are, you know, they're active. When you click them, they'll switch these relays. As soon as you plug the jack in, that connection there gets uh, you know, breaks, right, or is disconnected, and the switches on the front of the amp effectively disabled, and the foot switch takes control. It's a nice way to do it, right? Otherwise, you end up with, you know, you, do you use the panel switches or do you use the foot switches? Um, yeah, and that's it, guys. So, um, again, this one was, uh, in terms of degree of difficulty, it's it's up there, quite a lot to do. But I think, you know, um, what I'd like you to take away from it, I guess, is that, you know, you don't need to do all of this. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you've got a JCM800 or a JCM800 clone, um, and you're looking to, you know, uh, go through, you know, to, to take, take a project on and, um, make some of these mods yourself. You can pick and choose, you know, you could just do the, you know, the Jakey Lee kind of stuff, which I've detailed in other videos. You can see some of the Jakey Lee stuff in here. You know, here's the, here's the 2N2 first coupling cap. Here's my 47 microfarad cap, which has been added um, to that gain stage and so on. You know, I recommend you go and watch my 2 3 mod video if, you, if you're interested in doing that. You could do that and you could just do the FET boost. All right, you could do that and just add an effects loop. Um, the channel switching stuff is probably the more complex thing um, in terms of what was uh, what was implemented in the amp. But you know, hey, I'll set out how to do all these things. So you know, if you're uh, if you're ready to take it on, uh, go for it. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, um, I'll see you next time. Cheers.